Judgment here. You are looking at Twinset, who was the first character I established in Diablo 2 Resurrected. He gets his name from a rather old idea where it is possible to equip both the Bull Kathos set and the Disciple set at the same time. I've added to that in the spare slots an Ariat's Face Slayer Guard, a Dual Leech Ring, and a Ravenfrost. Diablo 2 Resurrected did give me, for the first time, the chance to make what were previously ladder only rune words. And this character had completed the game before I eventually found a suitable base to make the rune word obedience that's on the mercenary. Apart from that, there's nothing really here that belongs in Diablo 2 Resurrected specifically. When I started this character, it was just meant to be a replacement for my Frenzy Barbarian who is still behind in Lord of Destruction running for Tyrael's Might. It does not seem to have been a particularly good choice to play a self-found Frenzy Barbarian through the game as my first Diablo 2 resurrected character. After about playing the character for two weeks and having in mind that I would like to make a contribution to the levelling guides that I had seen, I realised I still had all of Twinset's original recordings. So I've gone back and made video summaries that I will speed up in the software to show you how he got to the levels that he obtained and I may stop and show you some of the end of act battles as well. I will try and intersperse these with some gear summaries at various significant levels. I really do intend this video to be for beginners playing a melee character through the game and trying to find their own gear. And I'll try and make it something of a story as to how Twinset developed. Twinset leveled from level 7 in the Dark Wood to level 12 in the Stony Field, essentially by running Tristram. All of this was in Player's One mode. Here is a screenshot of Twinset's statistics at level 12. And you'll notice here that I have 25 stat points remaining. He then leveled up to level 17 in both the tower and also progressing through the game. He was level 16 at the cellar level 5 and level 17 in the catacombs level 2. Now by this stage he can equip the self-found stealth and go on to battle in Daryl. And I'll show you in real time here the actual end of act quest battle against Indaril. Oh, the anti damp damp by damage crop crop. Jeez, and she's down. Screenshot of his statistics at level 17, and you'll notice if you wish to go back and compare them with the level 12 one that they have improved a little bit, but we now have 30 stat points remaining. Twinset now moves into Act 2 normal level and progresses from levels 18 to 24. At this stage, the high experience areas are not available, so what I frequently do with many of my characters is run the super uniques in Act 2. That is Beetle Burst, Fire Eye and Dark Elder. And you can see here that three of these levels are obtained while tackling Dark Elder, and I assume that Beetle Burst and Fire Eye may have been simply difficult to get to. Twinset was able to defeat Duriel at normal level without too much trouble and move into Act 3. Now what I did notice while progressing through Act 3, there was good experience to be gained just while progressing through the game. He did gain one level while at the traditional levelling spot of the Battle Maid Serena, defeated Mephisto without too much problems and then moved into Act 4. Like Act 3, there was good experience to be gained progressing through the game, and he arrived at Diablo. I have shown you the Andaril normal quest battle. The Diablo one, though, shows the trouble of playing a melee character. 
taking on Diablo at normal level meant a battle of approximately 14 minutes and 20 seconds. After that he gained another level by running at 4. I thought I'd show people this well-known Diablo 2 experience guide. It shows here the optimum place to be depending on your character level and it's further su summarized in a table down here. As far as I'm concerned this is a perfectly accurate guide to level your character but I personally prefer to run for experience by running super unique monsters using the player's X command. But I'll ask people to note here in particular this part of the chart where between level 24 and 25 the experience all of a sudden rises from about 5% up to about 30% depending on where you are in the game. Once your character has passed level 24, there is a sizable experience gain. Once Twinset had access to Act 5, that's when the serious levelling begins. He was able to go up to the Frigid Highlands Waypoint and gain access to Eldritch the Rectifier and get some levelling done there. I have gone back to the spreadsheet here to show you this, so from about from levels 32 to 33, down to 38 we've run Eldritch, then a mix of Eldritch and the Crystalline Passage, and then finally on to Pindleskin. Here is a screenshot showing Twin Set's statistics before taking on Bale for the first time in normal level. Twin Set first took on Bale at level 45 to complete normal level, and I'm going to show you here a speeded up version of the Bale quest battle. It took a little over four minutes to defeat Bale at level 45, as opposed to about the 14 minutes it took to defeat Diablo at level 27, which at least shows the benefit of trying to gain levels, particularly with a melee character. Once he had rescued Anya and could gain access to Pindleskin, then it was time to up the player numbers and run more or less purely for experience. And once that was done, it was time to move on to Lister and Bale, and I kept him going until he hit about level 60 in normal level. Now I did start Nightmare level with Twin Set about level 60, but I found it tough going. So for a short while actually went back to normal level and continued to gain some levels at Lister and Bale at Players 8 until he hit a little past level 65 and after that I moved into Nightmare level permanently. You can see this summarised on the graph. So from this area here at about level 28 up to about level 65 was all done in normal level and the majority of the experience there was obtained running Venta, Lister and Bale after initially running Eldritch and Pindleskin. The trick here was to try and accumulate good enough gear to run these areas efficiently and be able to kill Lister and Bale in Players 8 mode for maximum experience. So how did Twinset find such gear? To me, while levelling such characters, it is of some importance to carry some measure of magic find. This particular character turned out to be quite lucky in that respect because having generated some small amount of magic find, he did, during the course of playing through the game, find the Immortal King Avenger Guard four times. And one of them came out as a full 40 magic find helm, into which I added two topaz. By saving some skill points, I was able to compensate for the lack of resistances by putting some extra points into natural resistance. Another area that should not be ignored is Nightmare Level Lower Karast. This can be an excellent source of mid-level runes and also skill charms. And he did find a number of skill charms, of which the Assassin one I'm showing you here, with 12 hit recovery, was probably the best. I'm going to show you here two gear summaries. One at level 40 and one at level 60 to show you the self-found gear he had at these levels. That Morning Star and the Kiburb's Cudgel Scepter. 
that rare helm, the runewood stealth and a light plate, cold resistance magic find amulet, triple resistance magic find gloves I was happy to find, rare plated belt, a nasal ring of bottom magic find but close to maximum attack rating, and a 4 life percent steel ring, on switch a teleportation staff, some small charms which essentially add resistances and that one a little bit of lightning damage, and I didn't mention the boots before, he has the found the Sanders boots. Uh, twin set has just reached level 60. He's carrying the following two weapons. Uh, the Kiverb Cudgel, which still seems to be a worthy weapon, but not as good as the other thing we found, the Flesh Render Barb Club. Now while that's strictly speaking a druid weapon, the Crushing Blow, Deadly Strike, Open Wounds, Prevent Monster Heal, all of those are good things in my opinion. Stealth Light Plate. Blood Fist Heavy Gloves, Sanders Boots, the second and better of two String of Ears de Demon Hide Sashes we've found, a Nasal Ring, that Magic Find Ring, that Magic Find Cold Resistance Amulet, and that helm there was the, re was the uh, Anya Quest Reward, and I dropped a plus one to Mastery's helm in favour of this one because of the plus two to Natural Resistance. I found a Lightning Skiller for Sorceress. Uh, that's only there for the strength. I think we can probably drop that one. Cold damage charm, tender mana charm. We can probably dr take out the strength one, put those two, and a few resistance charms. On switch, there is a staff of uh, teleportation, and it produces those statistics. The advanced stats are those. So we have 56 magic find, 65 run walk, I don't mind. But we'll have to change these around when we move into Nightmare level. We have 95 stat points, that's a bit silly. The Mercenary Fazel is a blessed aim mercenary. He has a Kelpie Snare, which I'm surprised dropped in normal level. An Ethereal Rattle Cage. And a Visionary Mod Mask, a Prismatic Amulet. And we also found the Steel Driver. One point in Berserk might do very nicely their physical immunes with that weapon on Switch. Much of Twin Set's play in Nightmare level consisted of simply playing through the game without too much experience gain. But if you look on the graph here, you'll see that he went from Act 5 Normal, playing Lister and Bale, up to Act 5 Nightmare, Eldritch and Pendleskin. And in the course of that, he gained approximately six levels. But once he hit Eldritch and Pendleskin and had access to Act 5, it was time to start leveling again. As with normal level, there was a lot of experience to be gained at both Eldritch and Pindleskin. What I'm showing you here is each level change. Firstly running at Eldritch in Player 7 mode and then at Pindleskin. As I leveled Twin Set, it became obvious that Eldritch was not offering the same experience as Pindleskin. So then I changed to Pindleskin and after that, it was time to move on complete Act 5 and Nightmare level and then repeatedly run Bale and Lister and Bentar for the experience they offered. Here is a sample of Twin Set's play at late Nightmare level. And this is Twin Set moving from level 75 to level 76. Bentar's wave and Lister's wave are done in Player's 5 mode, and Bale is tackled in Player's 3 mode. What I would like you to concentrate on here is the experience gain per monster. And I've edited the video to show as each monster drops, you should be able to see a noticeable movement in the experience bar. And this is how he finished Nightmare level. Twinset now moves on to Hell level. He completes Acts 1 and 2 in Hell level and moves from about level 77 up to about level 79. And he hits level 80, somewhere in Act 2 Hell. I'm going to stop here and show you another gear summary of what he had found at level 80. We are in Loot Galane. Uh, Twinset the Barbarian he is now level 80. I thought I'd show you his gear at this stage. He is just short of going into face Duriel in Hell Level. Weapons are the Runeword Black in and out. 
and still the flesh render barb club. I am still waiting for hell level items to drop. Armor is treachery made in a three socket dust shroud that we found in nightmare level. The helm is still the same immortal king avenger guard that is the second one that he has found and I'll show you the third one in a moment. Boots are the Sanders boots. Still the string of ears demon hide sash and for combat purposes we're using those crafted gloves with their attack speed, crushing blow, life steal and a boost of fire resistance. The two rings are the angelic ring and that life steal lightning resistance amulet, uh, ring and for the first time ever I'm using the angelic wings ring combination. Charms are one to masteries, one each of resistance charms and then other resistance charms. It produces these stats, these do not include the resistances added by the level 15 fade. The advanced stats are these, so notice there's only 30 magic fine but we can do something about that. The mercenary has the black leech blade bill, the 5% chance to cast level 5 weaken on strike and is extremely useful, the bone flesh plate mail up to a templar coat and the tell rasher mask which gives him a total of 23% lifesteal. Some of the other gear in the stash includes another immortal king helm that we found. This one was a perfect one for magic find so I've added into that two perfect topaz to get a total of 88 magic fine. I can use that in less dangerous areas. Those gloves again don't have the attack speed that these ones do. They have about the same fire resistance but these ones have 25 magic find. A hit recovery charm and if I was to find space for that in conjunction with the hit recovery offered by the treachery that would get to a total of 28 which would get past a break point of 27. There is the Mavina belt if I want more run, walk and mana steel. We found the steel driver Great Maul. I've upped that to a Martel de Fur and occasionally I put that on switch and use it with Berserk against physical immunes. And there are various bits of other equipment we could try. There is a perfect Kelpie snare found in, uh, I think in Nightmare level. It's the second one that we found, I think. The rune word honor does more damage than the black leech blade that the mercenary currently has but I prefer him to have the level 5 weaken and the slightly greater life steal and various pairs of gloves there's some attack speed if we need it uh, magic flying gloves another pair of crafted gloves and we're about to get rid of those I think I can't imagine where we'd need those anymore the blood fists and that set of gloves for more cold resistance we have various uh, socketing formulas for armor, helms and weapons and I'm still trying to look around to find to use a ladder rune word, something like obedience on the mercenary but I'm really struggling to find bases. So here we have three sets of runes for the rune word honor. There is rhyme, there is a better stealth but I don't think I'm going to get to that. Skills, I play with a few skill points in reserve I don't think there's much point to this anymore. I have maximized battle orders. Battle Cry I'm not using at the moment because the level 5 weaken from the mercenary does a much wider range. I've up Taunt as a synergy to Frenzy. Combat Masteries I've maximized Mace Mastery and one point each into increased stamina, increased speed, natural resistance, iron skin. And combat skills I've maximized Frenzy. I put one point into Leap Attack for nostalgia's sake, that was a mistake. There's no need for either of those two really, though it was useful against Diablo in normal level. Three points into double swing, I should have used Taunt as a synergy. I may put more points into Berserk while playing through Hell level to deal with physical immunes. Currently I am leveling Twin Set in Act 2 by running Beetle Burst, Dark Elder, Fire Eye and any other uniques I can find on the way in Players 3 mode. So I have 80 stat points and the idea here is that if I can find a hell level base item I'll have enough points in reserve to put up both strength and dexterity. Say to get a scourge which I think requires strength of about 125 and I think we are already past the dexterity requirement. That's the attack rating and that's primarily brought about by the angelic wings amulet combination. If I take off either one of those you can see that the attack rating plummets 
and the average chance to hit plummets. So we're going to try and get twin set to level 81 and then move on through more hell level. Twin set's progress through hell level was similar to the way he progressed through normal level. He progressed through Act 1 just to play through the game. He stopped in Act 2 to level at Beetle Burst, Dark Elder and Fire Eye. And what you're seeing here is him defeating these monsters in Players 3 mode at level 82. I've not shown you here, but this particular map generated a large number of unique and champion groups across the three areas that you're seeing here. And I would often stop and defeat those monsters as well. Act 3 and Act 4 were played just to progress through the game. Twinset was able to progress through Act 5 quite easily. Twinset reached the Ancients in Hell Level just after he passed level 87. And what you're seeing here is the start and the end of his battle against the Ancients so you can see the experience he gained. After that he took on Bale's waves and Bale himself and you're seeing here a speeded up version of his battle against the last two waves of Bale and the battle against Bale himself. Due to being level 87 it was reasonably easy to hit Bale at this stage and the quest battle against Bale lasted about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. He was able to complete Hell Level without any deaths. Twinset here has just hit level 88. He finished Hell Level at 87. I will show you the self-found gear he had at the end of Hell Level. Heaven's Light Mighty Scepter into which I've put an Ammon Rune and an Attack Speed Jewel. The Demon Limb Tyrant Club. The Sanders Boots. The Rune Word Treachery in a Dust Shroud. One of three Immortal King's Will Avenger Guard. This one happened to drop perfectly for Magic Fine, so I've added in two topaz for that. A String of Ears Demon Hide Sash. The Angelic Ring and Amulet combination. A ring primarily there for its mana steal, though it does give a significant boost to mana and also a small amount of Magic Find. This pair of Crafted Gloves with a sizable boost of fire resistance and maximum magic find available. The charms consist of a Mastery's Charm, a Warcry's Charm and a Lightning Resistance Charm. And the others are just various resistance charms. There's a double Poison Damage Charm. And he has extra Cold Resistance with the Treachery, extra Fire Resistance with the Gloves and extra lightning resistance by virtue of that charm. On switch, still the same Staff of Teleportation. The Mercenary Faisal, I'm giving him a run with the Pier Tombali Kuant Partisan, though he has normally used the Black Leech Blade Bill, a Bone Flesh Plate Mail up to a Templar Coat, and the Talrasher Mask. It produces this set of st statistics, this set of advanced statistics. You might think the uh, resistances are a little low but this is without the fade from the treachery pro propagating. For skills, well we've just gone one inch in into Howl, uh, 14 base points into Taunt because it's a synergy to Frenzy, one into Battle Cry, one into Shout. We have maximized battle orders. For combat masteries, Maximize Mace Mastery, one each into Increased Stamina, Increased Speed, Iron Skin and three base points into Natural Resistance and the advantage of that was it enabled him to carry the Immortal King Helm with double topaz instead of having Resistance runes in it. Combat skills, we have Maximize Frenzy, extra couple into Double Swing, one point down as far as Berserk for Physical Immunes and that's another place where arguably these six skill choices remaining could go. In the stash we have a 10% lifesteal ring we crafted. That's a good ring. Uh, I'm using the 4% mana steel but that could easily take its place. A similar ring there, I thought that was good for a blue one. 24 magic fine I've never used 
and there's a dual leech ring he found. There's the Mavina belt, that principally goes on running around Lower Karast, and a belt I've also yet to use is the Wilhelm's Pride battle belt with its dual leech. Runes, the best of them being a Vex, though there are two Ists and three Poles. That's our twin set progressed from level 1 to level 88. Here's a summary of what I think are the key points to leveling a character, but I'm going to start by expanding on something which I think is peculiar to my own method of leveling. You may have noticed during the gear summaries that I have saved a lot of stat points. Normally when I level a character, the build I have in mind is somewhat settled, but I don't know what gear I'm going to find along the way. I normally save a lot of stat points. For this particular character, it enabled him to equip the Demon Limb, Tyrant Club, and also Dangoon's teaching, and by the time we'd put in the necessary points in both strength and dexterity for that, he was able to equip the Heaven's Light Mighty Scepter, which was probably the best weapon he found during the game. The classic example of saving stat points is the Wizard Spike Bone Knife. If you're playing a caster character and you find a Wizard Spike Bone Knife, all of a sudden you've found an item that will solve most of your resistance, cast rate and mana problems in one hit. However, it does require a lot of dexterity, so I consider it to be well worth the trouble of saving stat points to equip gear you find along the way. Take your time. It's easy to be under leveled in this game and particularly with melee characters it's worth spending some time to build some levels. You should look for unique groups, in particular Serena, Eldritch, Pindleskin, Lister and Bale, though you may wish to use the group in Act 2 of Dark Elder, Beetle Burst and Fire Eye before you can get to the monsters I have just mentioned. Don't be afraid to use the player's X command to try and up the experience from these groups and to enable you to have good enough gear to defeat these groups higher than players 1. Don't be afraid to try and build some magic find on your character. I normally find in this context while leveling that 50 to 100 magic find is a reasonable amount to carry. Don't ignore Nightmare Lower Karast. It's a good source, as I've already said, of skill charms and mid-level runes. Here's how I went about compiling information for this video. In the cell I've just highlighted there, there is twin set start at 9 o'clock on the 25th of September 2021. I went through the resultant video and denoted where he changed levels. Later on I edited out the parts of the video where there was essentially just standing around discussing with the stream. Uh, so the breaks I had for meals during the day and so on. And as he progressed, I simply made more and more of these videos and I started to cut out the parts where he was progressing through the game but not leveling because my own playing style seems to be that I would stop in a certain spot and gain levels for twin set and then later on progress through the game with virtually no experience gained. So what you can see there are the recordings, the level in which Twinset was playing, the and the time it took, and over in the left hand column here, the level change. Here is the player number, here is the monsters he was tackling, here is the time it took. I then went through and edited the videos and made a table of cumulative time versus level which is this one here. In the end there, it took about 70 hours playing time to get to about level 89. Now keep in mind this is leveling time. It does not include time just progressing through the game and that probably shows what a tough job it was to level a self-found barbarian. I then put that, that table into a graph and that's the one you can see here. 
Now we're in LibreOffice here and the graphing functions in LibreOffice are not really all that sophisticated. I still didn't think that was particularly in informative so I matched the raw data from the recordings with the graph and made another graph with all the labels on it showing where he had leveled. I've made a PDF document of this and it looks like this. I will make available a copy of this in PDF format. It's formatted for an A3 page. We are in a PDF reader called Foxit, but virtually any PDF reader should have a zoom function. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the screen here and say zoom to 200%. And what people can now do is scroll around and get some idea of that level versus time graph and where he was. So for example, levels 1 to 24, he was an act 1, 2 normal. Levels 24 to 28, he was an act 3, 4 normal. And the horizontal reddish orange line tells you the time he took. So for example, if we go to the end of the graph where each corresponding level took, took a lot longer, you can see from there to there he was running exclusively Hel Eldritch, Pendleskin, Venter, Lister and Bale. And you can go back to the original spreadsheet to see the player number if you wish to do so. And I'll make copies of these available in the description.